By now, many of you have already had a chance to view and use the newly enhanced events section of D2JSP. Today I'm going to provide a walkthrough of what this system offers. The goal with the new event system is to allow you to sign up for and create events that others can sign up to. Previously, users were forced to create topics to create events such as leveling services or Uber Trists. Now, you can utilize the new event system to manage your game attendees and conversations. An important thing to note at this point is that all events and services must be created through this event system. All topics posted in the forums regarding events and services will be closed. Now let's talk about how to use the system. To access your events, click the My Events link in the upper right corner. This takes you to a list of events that you are managing and also signed up to attend. Located in the upper right corner of the events section is a search bar. Typing in a phrase here allows you to quickly locate an event based on the terms that you're typing in. For example, if I want to locate events with the phrase bail run, I can type this in and hit the search button, which will find these events for me. Should you not find the event that you're looking for and or wish to create an event of your own, you can do so by clicking the add new event button located here. When creating your event, you will need to provide some basic information. For example, if I wanted to create a Diablo 2 Uber Trist event, I can do so very easily by typing this into the event caption. As you type, the system will try to match what you're typing to make the process as easy as possible. With just a few clicks, you can have your event up and running. Of course, you can type in whatever you want for the event. It doesn't have to be one of these autocomplete entries. For the event description, you can provide a detailed description of the event and also embed images using the built-in site editor. With the new event system, you can not only create private events, such as birthdays or anniversaries, but you can also create events that people can attend. When specifying an event date, make sure that it occurs somewhere between now and sometime in the future to ensure that people can actually attend your event. If you choose to create a private event, you are choosing to create an event that only you can see and no one can attend. If you're creating a recurring event, you're creating an event that people may be able to see unless you mark it as private, but no one can attend. A birthday would be a good example of a recurring event. If you check the allow people to join this event button, you are creating an event that people can join. The system will provide you with an alert indicating that you must abide by the forum rules when creating the event. Also, the system gives you a requirement regarding service events. The options next to this button allow you to restrict who can join the event. You can have your event be open to anyone, only your friends, or only your guild members. If you're allowing people to join, you can also specify whether or not you want to approve attendees. This will allow you full control over who actually has signed up for your event. The next option is to specify the max number of attendees you're allowing for your event. If you're hosting a Diablo 2 game, it would be recommended to keep the cap at 8 attendees, as that's the maximum number of players you can have in a game at one time. Lastly, you can specify what sort of reminders you want to receive. Once you've filled in all of the information, you can create the event by clicking the Add New Event button here. Once we've created the event, we can now access it by clicking the link in our list here. When viewing the event detail page, we can see all of the information about the event, a list of current and pending subscribers, and also the comments posted regarding the event. Let's talk about some of the other features that are available. I already mentioned that you have the ability to use the search bar at the top right to find events, but you also have a quick search bar of phrases that you can use to locate your events. By clicking these, the system performs a search matching the quick search term's value. So by clicking US West, the system will perform a search of all events containing the words US West. The system provides you with a few default terms, but adding and editing these is very simple. To do this, click the edit icon located next to the quick search terms. Now we're looking at our list of quick search terms and we can change or add to this list as needed. For example, if I wanted to remove a couple, it's as easy as clicking the delete icon next to them. If I want to add a new term, I can do so by clicking the add new quick search button. I can add in the term bail run, specify the actual search value, which is what will be used when searching, and when I'm finished, I'll click the save button. You can see here that this new term has been added and when clicked will return a list of events containing these search terms. At any time, if you should wish to view the list of all of the events in the system, you can do so by clicking the All Events link located here. The last thing we'll talk about today is the process of joining events. To do this, first locate the event you want to join and make sure that you meet the restrictions shown. For example, if an event is for friends only, you must be a friend of the member to view or join it. Now that I've found an event to join, I can join it by clicking the Join Event button. 
The next step is to indicate what sort of reminders I'd like to receive. Once I've finished this, I can click the Sign Up button. Now I'm marked to attend this event and can post comments or leave the event at any time. This concludes our brief overview of the new event system. I hope you learned a few things, and please check back in for future updates as we have several new features on the drone.